Hey guys, how's it going? Clayton Motos here, and I forgot to film an intro for this video. So I'm doing that right now, and I thought I could just do it with a little, you know, here's what it looks like. So, doing this without camera girl is a little interesting. So this is the finished product that we came out with. Carb is in really good shape, ready to be put in that 450. We've just, we've just got a little bit of hose work to do to put the new hoses on, but that's okay. Um, I didn't include that in the video because it's kind of straightforward, but I might put it in a later video if you guys want it. Um, so just let me know and we'll get in with the video. Okay, so everything's out of the ultrasonic and I took a couple pieces and just um, brought them up on the um, scotch Bright wheel here just to kind of buff them out because they're parts that you can see pretty good. But it came out pretty nice. Um, it's a little bit oxidized just from being an aluminum part. So um, we're gonna get started by putting the mid body back together. And to do that, we've got the gasket kit here. Okay, so now that we've got the gasket kit, we're just going to put this gasket on here, which is the one that goes on the bottom of the... Um... <laughs> thing. Um, and then to do this, we're gonna flip this upside down, and then this hole here corresponds with that one there. And you're gonna do it upside down just so that the gasket doesn't get um, messed up. And then you can set it down on a table and then you want to look in the bottom here for where your screw holes are. Mm. And then you're going to take your little two millimeter and get these little, you get brand new um, bolts with this too. And you're going to take it just like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker on it just because these can vibrate out with the 450s shake and shake. And you're just going to Barely cinch them down, not super tight because if anybody goes to replace this in the future, you don't want those to be stuck. And then any excess that comes out, you just want to wipe that away so you don't get it inside. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is put on this gasket, which goes around like this. Sets it inside of its little guy here. And then these two little rectangles go down like that. And then the new screws that you're going to get are going to be Allen's, which is a lot nicer than the star drives. This is going to go back up in the carburetor. So this pin goes inside that hole, and that's all you need to line it up. And after you do that, just take a quick look around the whole gasket to make sure everything's still in its place. And as you kind of push on everything to get it up in there, just like that. Make sure the gasket's still in place. And then you're gonna flip it upside down. You're gonna start threading in the bolts. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna be doing here is reassembling all the components that go in this top section here, starting with the choke. And what I like to do is just give everything a really light coat of grease because it does reciprocate inside of its housing and the grease isn't gonna get sucked into the motor and it's just nice to have that little extra bit of movement and slickness that'll stay in there for a little while. So then of course this just goes back inside of its little housing and then thread it in, grab the 14 millimeter wrench and we're just gonna lightly snug it down because again, this is a plastic nut that it's sitting in. Just like that. To talk about my point, this is a Moose Racing uh, carburetor rebuild kit. This is the needle that came inside of it. This is a stamped NFLR stock um, needle. This is the OEM standard needle. Now if I line them up just like that, if you look right down there at the end, this needle is shorter by a very, very tiny amount. But that tiny amount makes all the difference in these carburetors. Because that tiny amount can't be made up for with these little grooves because it's a half distance. And so your carburetor will never run right. I don't understand. 
This doesn't make any sense. But that's just how it is. We just want you to buy more paint. So what we need to do is take this clip, just like that, and we need to put it on our new stock needle in the fourth position. So we've got these little notches here, and we're gonna go down one, two, three, four. That's the groove that it needs to go into. And we can spin it around and take it and push it on the table. Now it's clipped in. We check it again. One, two, three, in the fourth clip. Okay, now, we'll, now we need to take a four millimeter Allen and undo this bolt here, which will uncover this. This is our slide. And we're gonna take the needle and we're gonna drop it right into that hole and pull it all the way down. And then this is gonna go right back on the top. Tighten it up in there. And there we go. This is the cap for the slide. You've got a new gasket for it right here. You can go ahead and put that in. And then this plate, even though it looks really convincing that it would go this way, it's actually going to go this way. Where the little gap, this stupid wheel, where the gap falls right here on the bottom. And if you look at this side where it's built in, you can see that same cutout. If you flip this, again, carburetor, excuse you, will not run right. Okay, now that that's done. It's a little car. It is a little car. Hey. Big spike on the end. Next thing that we're gonna do is take our hot start and we're gonna thread it in just a little bit here, just so everything's ready to go in that department. But we're not gonna let it poke out because it makes it a little bit easier for this next part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some grease This is just maximum waterproof grease. And we're gonna um, put some inside of these um, needle bearings. Because it's very, very important that they all stay nice and oily, or greasy, not oily. Don't put oil in your bearings. Also, we're going to grease the shaft here, um, just so it'll apply some more grease to the bearings. And then before we install all that, we're going to go ahead and put in our um, sensor here. And if you see, we've got our mark right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I can see it. Trust me, it's there. Um, but if you don't have a mark there or a wash away in the ultrasonic, another good way to tell is to just kind of put this sensor halfway. It, it's got like this big oval shape and it's got a flat spot and you want that flat spot to be on the bolt. And then you can look inside here. Pretty good indication of whether or not you're lined up there. And then I'm gonna take my bolt and again, put some, just a little bit of Loctite on it. And then we're gonna thread it in here. We can look at the washers here and kind of find that halfway spot which is exactly where my line is. So if anybody wants proof that that's how that works, there's your proof right there, mm -hmm. if you can see it. Get a little bit of tightness on that so that doesn't come loose on us. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and put in this shaft. So what you need to do is this long hook here goes down and hooks onto this little tab, just like that. You need to get this other hook, which is right there inside that. You have to hook the hook and the hook. But before you do that, just kind of lightly press it in like that so you can put in your arm here. But before you put that in, you have to put in your washers. Your washers, there's a nylon one and there's a steel one. The nylon one goes against it over here and the steel one holds the nylon one. And you need to take your arm and it's going to go right inside the hooks. It's going to go right inside like that and the, it's going to hold the washers in place. Okay, now make sure that your spring is still on its little course there and then you're going to 
put the hook inside of its little spot. Make sure to push this arm up out of the way. And then after you do that, you're gonna bring it around and you're gonna wind it. So there's half. That is close to a full revolution. Sorry, fingers. Okay. My hands are kind of greasy. There. And you'll feel it kind of sit into the sensor over here. And you can put the sensor on after if you want. That makes it a little bit easier. But, um, Everything's all buttoned up in there. And then you're gonna take your idle adjuster and you're gonna wind this back just a little bit. Sometimes it helps if you use a Allen and get some more leverage on it. But kind of push this up out of the way. And you can start threading in your threads. And you can pull your thing up out of the way. And then you've got connection there. Okay, and I'm not going to set the idle yet because I'm not quite sure what it is. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, we're going to pull up on our little guy here and put just a little bit of grease on his wheels so that they can flow a bit more smoothly. With a giant brush here. Um, and then you're gonna do the same thing, just a little bit to the wheels. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then this plate that comes on and off faces towards the engine side of the carburetor. So it goes forward. I'll put an arrow there to help everybody see. And then these little arms are gonna go. And then you have to kind of come in here and push this needle where it's supposed to go. Where's it supposed to go? It's supposed to go inside that little hole, just like that. and everything falls in like that. Depending on what kind of kit you get is also important. Um, this is a kit that I'm not used to, but I thought I'd try it out. So this is the little bolt that holds the um, reciprocating, ah! that holds the reciprocating arm on right here. This kit did not come with a new one. I know the all balls one does. Um, and then we're just gonna, I put a little bit more Loctite on that. And we're just gonna tighten him up. Now, ready to go. So now we're gonna come down to the bottom here. And we've got our um, throttle tube. A little, I don't know what the right name for that is. First, this plastic piece goes on, and then your tube, and then that gets tightened down with an eight millimeter, and then, We've got our brand new main jet, which is a stock 160. Just gonna thread in just like that. Actually, we should check and make sure it's clear first. Even though it's brand new, you never know. You guys want to take a look? All the way through. You can see all the way through. And then we're gonna take this six millimeter, snug that up, just like that. And then we've got our brand new pilot, which is our stock 45. Good. And then, see that? Little tiny. But it's good to go. So now we can drop that in its place. And then we're just gonna, again, just barely get it snug because we don't want to tighten it too much and hurt it or the body of the carburetor. So we're just gonna get that fairly snug. And then we've got our brand new starter jet, which is also stock 72. See that? 
Okay, and we're gonna drop it in its hole, which is the front one. And then tighten that up. And then we've got, there is one more jet, this kind of, this air bleeder jet, but mine is really stuck in there and I'm not quite sure that I can get it out without um, causing any kind of damage to it. Um, so it's gonna stay in there. I blew it out, it looks clean. Um, the kits do come with a replacement one, but um, which is the stock 100. So I can't get mine out and I don't wanna risk it and it's clear, I blew it out, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, then in the bottom of the float here, inside here is what's called your leak jet. And um, I got mine out and let's see what this kit has. Stock 55, okay. And then it just drops in like that. And then you can thread it. Um, Next thing we're going to do is put the float and needle back in, which comes in this little baggie. There's our new needle. Nice sharp point on it. Um, here's our floats. This goes up. See that little tab there? It's going to go up and over, just like that. And then you're going to seat it, drop the needle in there. And then take your pin and move the float around so that it goes through the pin there. Next, we'll put the bowl gasket, or actually we won't do that. Next thing we're gonna do is put the new O-ring on this um, plug here, which is just gonna go in and around like that. And then thread it in here takes a 17 millimeter. And then we're gonna, um, I got a brand new Tusk accelerator pump rebuild kit from Rocky Mountain. And it's got all my little pieces to rebuild it. And then, so, this O-ring goes there. And we've got this guy here, and the nipple right there needs to go up. And kind of push it in all around. And this is your new O-ring here. Falls into that little hole. And then you're going to take your spring, and you can set it on either way you want. I found that it's easier to set it inside of here. And then you kind of make a sandwich with it. Don't let your O-rings fall out, though. There we go. Get everything lined up there. And then you've got all your brand new screws. I'm not going to put Loctite on these. Um, because they're not, like, inside the carburetor, and so you can actually put a little bit more torque on them. Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, cover on here. I cleaned it up a little bit. And this is the brand new gasket for it. You can take the cover here and put it up there. And I think we've got new screws for it. So, bowl gasket goes on just like that. And then flip up the carb. Actually, we'll flip down the carbon up the bowl. Let's see if I can get this up for y'all. And then where the fuel screw goes in is going to go away from you. And then this tube goes just like that inside. And then you can flip everything over and put in your new bolts. Make sure to put your idle adjuster back where it goes. Now we've only got a couple more things here. We've got the fuel screw here, which is going to take a washer. Some, a lot of these are different, so um, it's either going to be a washer, spring, washer, gasket, or spring, washer, oops. 
gasket. It's just whatever your kit comes with is how you should put everything together. And we're just gonna thread on the new fuel screw, just like that. You gotta push it up in there. And then turn it in like that until you feel it get tight on you. Right there, with the number three, and the stock fuel screw setting for these 450s is one and an eighth turn. So there's one, and I'm gonna do it one and a quarter. So I've got the number four facing me, and when it's mounted in the carb, I'll see the number one. So that's, it lets me know it's at one and a full quarter of a revolution. And then of course in my kit, I've got the extra things that I didn't use, the um, air screw, this stock needle, and then the stuff. Well, it's not the stock needle. Well, actually it's not the stock needle, you're right. And then the stuff for the um, accelerator pump that came in the other kit. Okay, so that almost wraps it up. The only other thing that we have to do is we're gonna leak test this car. Oh, I made a mistake that I told you guys not to make. I forgot to put these little guys back on, but that's okay. So these back two on the ones that are on the air box side. And then the last one you're gonna put on this accelerator pump corner here. One important thing about that is you wanna kind of angle this as far this way as you can, as far to the left, mm. um, while it's still pointing forward, because you wanna keep the hose as far away from the exhaust as possible. So I've got the carburetor hooked up with a fuel line to the gas tank. So the carburetor's all full up. The only other thing I wanna do, because you can make this. The only other thing I want to do is take an Allen here and I want to test to see how the accelerator pump is functioning. Yep, see that? Gas. Mm. So that's the accelerator pump working. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's me tipping the carburetors coming out of the overflow. Okay, that's nothing to be worried about. Okay, so that looks like the carburetor is functioning just as it should. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like that I went over some stuff that you don't see in the normal videos, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to help me help you guys. I'll see you all in the next video.